Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, from a bunch of requests, I'm going to be stringing up, or actually, I'm going to be giving you the hacks of this racket right here, the Prestige MP. Uh, the 1820 pattern of this racket makes it actually one of the most difficult rackets to string on the market. Plus, the chambers with this special grommet system they have uh, makes it pretty difficult and time consuming. Uh, just to give you a background with my relationship and the old versions of this racket, um, I started stringing in the year 1990. And I was a young buck back then. And this was a pain in the ass to string back then. It was a lot worse, a lot worse than it is now. Like this is a cakewalk compared to what that was. Uh, I had the grommets. You see these grommets that are semi soft and moves? Well, they weren't that way back then. Like, even on a brand new prestige frame, when I pulled strings that were out here and out here on the mains, these things would snap because they were so brittle. And after a couple of string jobs, I had to use this, tubing. Now this is actually pretty good tubing. I, I get this from a, a great supplier and this is kind of firm stuff that's as small as you can get it, like as, thin as you can get it back in the stone ages when I back then they were the softer kind of clearer stuff that wasn't as hard so I had to keep working on cutting it and shaping it and sharpening it because of the chambers I can't I couldn't really go through it like this so I actually had to go through here right and then kind of make sure it stays in or if, I had, or if I had two of them that I had to do, which was most of the case, I had to kind of get it, somehow get it inside the chamber and kind of have it go like that. So imagine, you know, teenager trying to string that thing, right? It wasn't easy. And every time I saw it, I'm like, oh, damn, this thing again. And it probably took me two hours, hour and a half to do one of them, you know, probably you know, 45 minutes of bitching and then 45 minutes of stringing, you know, because it wasn't fun. All right. So let's let's string this racket now and I'll show you my hacks for this. Let's get going. The Prestige MP. I know this is an 1820. So I'm on the main, since this is coming off of a reel again, uh, nine and nine again, nine mains and nine mains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? So I'm moving, again, I'm moving down like shorter and slightly shorter until I get to the last main. So every time I pull, I go one. So and it's racket at the edge to racket at the edge like that. That's one, right? And then two is lining up with that. I mean, as close as you can get uh, to it without, you know, without overdoing it or underdoing it. Um, you should never be short if you do it this way. All right, so. Opposite side, closer to the post. Make a couple adjustments because I felt that was loose. All right, level out. No slippage. Too loose. Tighten it up. 
Okay. That moved a little bit. Let me just make sure. Yeah, that's going to move no matter what sometimes. But it'll make up for it on the back pool. This is the back pool. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right here for you guys and then get to where I need to go for the hacks because this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so I'll see you back in a sec. Okay, so I just finished the mains. Now, head gives you the option of tying off here or here. I know that in some of the older frames, older prestiges, this didn't exist and you had to go there, right? To make it easy for yourself, go here, right? It's not as easy to go in there, but that's gonna, that's gonna be the one you have to go into to make it easier for yourself, okay? So we have to go in here to tie it off. Now, I'm gonna flip it around. That's sticking out, right? And that's not bad, actually, but you see how when I let go, it pops back out again? Right, we need to snap that in. So, get one of these starting clamps. I pulled out as tight as I could. Look, it's still doing that. Okay, so this isn't one of those snapping ones. So what I'm gonna that what I'm gonna have to do because there are snapping ones out there in the older models is make sure. I, I get this first knot real tight. Okay. Towards you. Away. Out. Up. Towards you. Okay. Second knot. Same thing. Towards you. Up and away. Out. Towards you. See? Same thing on the other side. Okay. Now, I don't know if some of you have done this before, but I know when I'm in a rush, uh, I do it, uh, is I go to the machine. This is a demo, right? I don't recommend you doing it this way, but... If you have to, the machine can do it for you. Now, this is my way of doing it though. I, I don't let it go all the way back, all right? So check it out. I watch this knot, I'm looking at this knot, right? And then I'm at the head, okay? I don't use the Diablo, because it, it won't be able to control it as easy. So I'm in, right? Tight, ooh, see? You gotta be very fast, right? You saw the racket move and you saw the knot done, right? So second one, done. That's all you need to do. Like I said, I don't recommend doing that, but that's gonna give me a lot more tension than trying to do it myself with this, okay? I decide to do it this way, right? When you get this in here, and you push the button, make sure you're on it. Like, make sure you're on the button fast. As soon as you see that knot start tightening up, you better be on that button. So it, it's pretty much like that. Because you'll see it. Because you're going to be like that with very little tension through here. Right? And then you're going to hit it and then hit it again. Like, real fast. Right? You can always redo it again if you have to. But the last thing you want to do is pull it all the way to the back. That's, you do not want that. You just want to be able to see that. Go and then, oop, oop, like that. Oop, that's too much, see? You gotta be like that, like that, okay? Now, if you have a crank, a drop weight, or any of those, it's easier to control, right? You don't have to 
count on a button. You just kind of go yourself until you get to the right thing and then you kind of let it go on that uh, crank, right? Same thing with the drop weight, right? So that'll help you with the leverage over the racket. I Like I said, I don't recommend doing this, but for the sake of leverage, right, um, it's helpful. Sometimes if you're gonna do it this way in order to protect a frame, get like an old overgrip or replacement grip and fold it in half like that. Put it right there, right? Just to protect the frame and do that, right? And then go for it. Okay, like I said, I'm not condoning this. Do not do this unless, you know, it, it, you have to, okay? And especially on an electronic machine here, uh, I it's probably gonna be fine with a crank and probably gonna be fine with a drop weight because you're easy, it's easier to control it. But use a pad to, con you know, to uh, protect the frame if you're gonna go like that, okay? I need to do the cross now. Um, Especially on prestigious, you make sure you cut a nice sharp tip on these strings. You guys probably already know this if you do these rackets. Um, nice sharp tip, okay? So just in case you don't know how to do it, I doubt that you don't. You take a nice sharp cutter, and then instead of cutting it like this, in which it'll be flat, you cut it at an angle like that to make it nice and sharp, right? So like that okay so there's an up there's an up and then a down to this okay so i like to just try up first like that and see if it lets me in so i'm starting at the second um cross again going up and it lets me in all right like I said, these rackets have gotten a lot easier in the last um, couple generations to string. So, going to the other side, back in. Okay, swinging back around. And this one's got nothing in the way, so that's, that's easy. Okay. In, right so you measure out to the Diablo and to the string head and then we clamp down hit the knot button again I'm gonna string the third cross now down and then so pulling second cross first okay. clamping close to the thing and we're set. Okay. All right. So there's really nothing unique right now. So I'm gonna get to the end here and then come right back to you. Places that I have problems with, and I'm sure you do, you do too if you have these six point stringers, is these braces, right? They are clamping down on this grommet, right? Uh, and closing up this hole a little more, just like the old uh, prestiges that have kind of the closed part here that makes it difficult for you to get the string in. So I'm encountering it right now. Um, what I usually do here is cut a nice fresh edge again. And then I go wherever it's widest, right? That I can get through. And then I slide it in to that grommet. So I, I put it there, right? And then I slide it down and then I push in. 
Um, another way to do it would be use a plier. Just take a little bit of it, try to line it up to the hole and, and push, right? Like that, all right? I gotta get into this brace and get into the hole right there, okay? And obviously if I try to do this, I don't have the right angle at doing it. Even if I can get in the slot, it, it's gonna wanna go downwards towards, so basically going like that. You see that, right? So what you gotta do, sorry. What you gotta do is come around and over. Definitely gonna have to use a plier here. Definitely gonna have to use a plier here. So, take some of that, line it up with the hole and, and put it through just like that, okay? Now, I know some of you really want to get this done fast. Well, you got to invest a little bit of time when you see this racket. I mean, I don't, um, like, I don't love it when I see this racket, but I know what to expect when I see this racket. So, uh, as you see, I'm on the other side now, and I, I got my finger down here, right? Because I know it's going to need a little leverage to get out of the other side. So I got this finger up, that finger down, right so i'm lining it up and then forcing with both to go through that hole right now that it's through i can continue okay two more crosses left okay so this is why we went into that first hole and not that second one because it's going to be a lot easier to get in here see i just pushed it right in okay And then I always kind of face upwards on it, the tip. And will it let me through? It Look, it flipped downwards. So that's where we're going to go, downwards. But it still went through upwards. Look. Right? So it's, there is a guide in there to make sure the string goes um, one way. Oh, heard a snap there. Okay, so now we're up here, right? Do you guys see that it's up there? And it looks like it's guiding us up there. So we're going to put our tip facing up. Make sure we get it up there. I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little tension there. So I, I'm gonna recut my tip. Make sure I'm angling up. See if I can get it in, like without my plier. Ugh, I can't. All right, looks like I'm gonna need my plier. Angle up like that. Right, get in there, right? Get a little tension. I'm not in the right spot here. Nope. Okay, so here is a hack, hack alert. Since that's semi in the middle, right? You get a, a sharp awl, you can see that there's daylight right there, okay? So the string is actually wanting you to go over, so it aligns with that over, okay? So what you do is you take the sharp awl and you look for that daylight right there. Now you make sure you don't poke that string uh, dead on or else you'll break that string dead on. So use light pressure, right, into that daylight right see if i feel the tension i'm moving that string right now see don't push it too far like probably the most you want to push it is right there to that tip okay and just let it rest there for a couple seconds while you cut another tip okay so 
I'm gonna see if you can see this, but so there's a gap now between here and there and here, right? You can see. I'm gonna get another owl so I can show you. All right, tip, tip. See, there's daylight there for me and daylight here for me, okay? So what I do is I get the tip and I put it right here to the side of it, right? Let's see if I, I'm, I'm not using my hands so you guys can see, so. Let me see if I can get a better angle at this. Hang on one second to show you, because I'm not used to, I'm gonna turn this around. Okay. So my daylight's right there. You see me? You see me with the daylight? Okay, right? So I'm gonna slowly pull this out and then, but there's tension here, okay? There's tension there. Look, it just took over the hole, okay? I'm gonna do that in slow motion for you one more time, okay? So it wants me to go up. So I go like that with the awl, right? And I stick it in, okay? Right? So I take the string that I freshly cut and I put it right next to the awl, okay? And as I release the awl out, there's tension here, right? Tension here, and I'm slowly out. I can feel the string moving in as I pull this all out. See, look, it took over, right? So now I'm in. And you can do that with um, most or all uh, strings that are kind of in your way. Uh, now I'm on the other side. I'm pretty sure that string's gonna be in my way again, right? So we don't need to use an awl this way. You just, so here's the thing that most people um, don't understand is that it wants you to go one way. Like this is pretty solid in the middle. So whatever it allows you to do uh, will be the way that you can do it. If you, if that makes any sense. So now the string's kind of smack dab in the middle of where I want to go, right? So I'm gonna start pushing and see where it allows me to go. So it's not allowing me to go anywhere. So it's what, so what's happening now is, is now, I'm gonna show you what's happening now. It's basically doing this. So this is, my finger is this string, right? My finger is this string. And the string I'm trying to put in is now hitting it flush like that, right? So when it does that, it's doing this. It's going to one side. So instead of coming through, it's doing this or this, right? So that's why I'm able to push the string through like this because it's now going down the channel. See, it's going down the channel. I'm pushing a lot of it through. It's probably curved now and going down this way or curved and going down that way inside the channel. Okay, it's going that way. My camera man's telling me. So, now I gotta pull it all the way out. I'm gonna cut a nice little tip. So we're gonna do this again, right? I'm gonna take a look at it. Where are we going? Damn, it's right in the middle there. Okay, I'm gonna try under first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig. I'm gonna go over first actually. I'm gonna find where my hole is on top and then get the grommet through it. Get my all through it, excuse me. So look, my tip is there, right? And then now I'm forcing it down, as you can see. Okay, now cut a fresh, fresh tip again. And then we're gonna go so check this out. I'm gonna have this facing up like that with my finger. I'm gonna release that. Put it in, right? So it's gonna take over. So I'm gonna push this while I'm letting that go, okay? 
and get it as far as I can. Okay, well, right there is where it is. I can feel it. So I'm gonna take my plier. All right, I'm pushing the all out now. Ready, one, two, three. Did I get it? I don't know if I got it. I, there, I got it now. Well, no, I didn't. Oh, it didn't work. It went right again. Let's try it again. Okay, back into the hole again. So now, since it didn't work going over, I'm gonna try under. So I'm gonna dig down, make sure I'm at the right spot. Mm. It's definitely not gonna be under. It's gonna have to be over. There, see it? I'll show you again, right? So the alls get making it out of the way and push, 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 push. Make sure it's lined there. Did you see that? Did you see that guys? Okay. You get more comfortable doing this, uh, you will feel it. You know, it's it's a feel thing. You know, it's you'll know when you're doing it right and perfectly. It'll just kind of come to you. Uh, but you kind of have it's a trial and error thing. I mean, I've I, I've been doing this for so long that you know it, it's like as you saw, it took me some time to to get it done too. Um, probably it's because of the pressure of you guys all watching me. So, uh, but <laughs> but. I got it done and you saw it. So if I could do it, you guys can do it. All right. So, but like I said, your best friend is going to be this sharp owl that will cost you all of $5. Um, and, uh, you know, the plier that might cost you $10. So just make sure, you know, you get a nice hold of both. And then, and then the only free tool in your, uh, supply cabinet your fingers you know it's a feel thing so feel 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 crab season okay all right finish this racket up yeah not feature sorry not feature time right now done 10 percent. here we go finish it off Okay, now the decision, where am I tying this off? I could easily go here, right? Easily go right here and tie this off because that's letting me in real easily. But head wants me to go up here and that's what I'm usually trained to do on some of these rackets. Uh, so I'm gonna come out of that side. Okay, let me see where I land back here now. Okay, so check it out. Since I'm double backing around, look, I'm gonna turn it around to you. Since I'm double backing around, there's a lot of string in there. I'm gonna back this out. I'm gonna back this out and take a look at this again. Mm. So there's one string through already, which is this that last main coming across and down here. So that's going in here, it'll probably stick out, right? If I go in this one, it'll stick out right here a bit. So it's gotta be here. All right, so, so what we're gonna do, see if I could get a snap before I, Brace for it, brace for it, giving it tension. Okay, well, I'm pulling about, you know, good amount of tension on it and I don't hear a snap. So, 
So my guess is it's right up against the other one. And that's all I get. Now, if you have an older, so this is one of those points. If you have an older prestige, um, you're probably going to want to hear that snap. This one's not going to snap. So, um, so I'm just going to have to proceed with tying a knot. Towards me, up, way towards me. That's about as tight as I can pull it. Checking to see if that's as much as I can get on it. See, it still sticks out a bit, right? I'm actually gonna, let's see if it helps. Again, look, I'm gonna eyeball this too to see if it moves, but I'm gonna also eyeball that knot to make sure I don't break it. Okay. No, it didn't do anything. That's all I get. So second knot through. Towards me, away. Towards me. I just let it go. All right, do it again. Second knot. Towards me, away, out, towards me. Okay. So, I'm gonna let this go while I'm holding this. Now, when I do, that also might move a little. I'm hoping it won't, because that means it's gonna lose a little tension, but that's, what, that's why I jacked it up five pounds on 10%. That's why I jacked it up 10% uh, on the machine. So, hopefully it doesn't lose too much tension. So, I'm tensioning the knot right now. Um, Let's move. I'm going to show you, see if it moves anywhere. So we're going to point the camera right there. Okay. So I'm going to go base clamp, base clamp, and then I'm going to go clamp. Let's see if it moves. It doesn't move. So we're okay. There's not going to be any tension lost from there. Feature again. Last main. First main. Okay, so tension the last one. Now, here's here's where I see a problem, and I don't want to keep this head tensioning so much. So I'm gonna lock this up right now um, and let this go. Head wants me to tie off right there. It says tie off not right there. You know, but in order for me to do that, I gotta get a string through there. Now, if I put this closer to the frame, it's gonna be in my way. This is the moment of truth. If I was doing, um, let's say, Andy Murray's racket, uh, I would go here. I would go all the way here as tight as I could here and tie off here. This is what I would do. All right? I would tie off right here. All right? Since this is a demo, because uh, I just examined it and it will be flushed through like that. Look, it's, it's going to be flushed. After I pull it, it'll be flushed because there's nothing in the way in there. And I'll back it back out for you. But since this is a demo racket, um, I'm gonna just continue here to this one is because that's what Head wants me to do. And it'll be flushed here too. So 
See, that's flushed. All right. I guess what I could do is this. Hole already. And then I'm gonna just pull tension again there with the knot feature on. Um, just to see if I could buy myself a little bit of space and get a little closer. I can't get in there. So I can, I bought myself basically, I don't know, maybe a millimeter here or there. Okay. Okay. So, knot number one. So at this point, I'm actually just gonna unknot it right here before tying knot number two while I'm holding tension. Face clamp. Okay. It's not, it's not gonna do much. It didn't do anything. As long as you're holding it while it knots up and then we can go knot number two. Knot number two is basically like a security, just in case not number one uh, slips. Um, like I said, it doesn't normally slip. It rarely slips, actually. So, okay. Nice and tight. Okay, we're good. Okay, so the moment of truth, getting it off the machine. Now, this will tell me if I warped it a bit because this racket is so soft or if I did it perfectly. Now, I'm gonna undo the 12 and the six. That came out pretty easily. And then I'm gonna do the bottom, the other four points. And that came out nicely. So I'm gonna release.